Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Holy Atom Cat and I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to take you on a educational journey across the wasteland, showing the best ways to earn XP. This video is targeted at very new players, rather than wasteland veterans, but stick around in case you pick up something you didn't know. I do want to mention, while this video isn't specifically targeted at solo players, I myself prefer to play solo for most of my playtime, so this video was made from that perspective. First we will talk about XP buffs. There's many ways you can increase how much XP you get per kill and the most known is Cranberry Relish. Cranberry Relish will give you an XP buff of 10% for one hour. This is quite a hefty increase. To craft this godly relish you will need 2 boiled water, 2 cranberries, 2 gourds, 2 sugar and 1 wood. 10 cranberry plants can be found at the Aaron Holt Homestead. I personally wouldn't bother using your green fun perk card here as the produce will spoil before you're able to use all 20. Now for some reason Bethesda decided to make gourds quite a rare commodity in the game. Well every veteran is going to know about Rayleigh's Bunker. To the new player this part of the map isn't very accessible. So if you head over to Hornwright Summer Villa you can find a gourd planter with a single gourd. Green Fun Perk card will not work on planters, so some patience will be required to plant it in your camp and harvest to multiply it. Snap seeds are easy and can be found along the riverbanks in the early game area of Flatwoods. Two of these create one sugar. Now that's everything you need, you need the recipe. It can be purchased from the food shop at the White Spring Resort, or it can randomly drop at one of the following events. Census Violence, Monster Mash, Line in the Sand, Distant Thunder, Surface to Air and AWOL Ornaments. To learn any more about these events just simply google them and loads of results will turn up. You can also purchase a recipe for the Cranberry Cobbler in White Springs. This is a less powerful recipe giving you an XP bonus of 5% but this only requires cranberries and wood rather than a whole list of ingredients. One last cranberry related consumable, Wasteland has added in a bottle of Nuka Cola Cranberry. You might find these randomly placed around the Wasteland and this will give you a 5% XP buff. Please note that only drink or slash eat one of these at a time as food and drink XP boost will not stack. With the release of Wastelanders, you can romance certain companions at your camp now. If you successfully romance a companion and then sleep in a bed while they're at your camp, you'll receive the Lover's Perk, which is a guaranteed 5% increase in experience gained. Keep note that if you sleep on a sleeping bag or a mattress that's laying on the floor, there's a good chance that you'll catch a disease. The Leader Bobblehead will also give you a 5% bonus to XP, however bobbleheads do not appear in copious amounts and would take a lot of time to specifically hunt down a single type. Just keep low in case you encounter any. One very specific event quest that can spawn is the Path to Enlightenment. It entails lighting up a suspiciously located lighthouse in order to attract the wise, wise Mothman's attention. You can then commune with the Wise Mothman to give you an XP boost of 5%. Your level of intelligence will directly affect how much XP you yield with every kill. So it might be worth investing early and swapping out what you need later on in the build. The following chems, Daddy-O and Mentats will increase your intelligence. So if you know you're about to face a lot of enemies, it can be worth dabbling in some drugs. Last on the list for buffs, teaming up with other players gives you a pretty good increase when used with the inspirational perk card in the charisma pool. If you're a loner or a hermit like me, you might just bite the bullet and accept that you won't have that buff. However, I would suggest going over to the Fallout 76 Reddit page and asking if anyone wants to team. Just mention your level and what quests or self-formulated adventures you want to endeavour and you'd be surprised how many people will want to, someone to enjoy Fallout with. Now we're done with buffs, let's talk locations. I'm going to split this topic into three sections. Level 20 to 30, level 30 to 40 and level 50 upwards. I'm not going to go over the subject of level 1 to 20 because following the main quest, doing a few side quests here and there and discovering locations will get you here very easily. However, once you hit level 20, 
the main quest line will try to take you to very high leveled areas and will require you to grind for a while. So for level 20 to 30 players, I would suggest farming the super mutants in Toxic Valley. The game will not direct you very well to appropriately leveled areas, but this is pretty decent. Another great location is going to be the Ash Heap. I would go here and try to discover every location. In the Ash Heap you'll find tons of mole miners. Now these guys give pretty decent XP and are pretty slow. Most use shotguns so for any ranged player these are very manageable. If you find a location where you thought to yourself, damn there's a lot of enemies here and I had a good time, just back out and load into another server. The enemies should be there. Occasionally a single mole miner will use a rocket launcher. These are however pretty inaccurate but do hurt a ton when you're hit with so watch out for those. The legendary sheep squatch can also be found wandering the ash heap so keep an eye out for him. Just, just don't try it, don't try it, just walk away. So now you're level 30 and if like me on your first character you've probably found a decent weapon, you've pulled together some pretty okay armour and you're probably feeling a bit cocky. Granted you will be able to manage slightly higher level enemies, you still can't go running around the mire taking on mega sloth gulpers while one shot in high level deathclaw. For these levels I decided to venture down to White Springs Golf Course. Here you can make lots of noise and attract a roughly level 40 to 60 ghouls into our armada of beefy robots with a lovely white gloss finish. As long as you get just one bullet to hit every target you'll still get the glorious XP for every enemy killed by the robots. However these ghouls will quite quickly overrun the robots so there still is an element of risk here and I would plan your escape route in advance. Good news if you're a range build there's a few spots to sit on the rooftops and snipe the ghouls. With headshots stacking with the sneak bonus and an even beefier sneak bonus with the perk card covert operations I would increase three levels every time I journey down for half an hour or so. Even better yet, when that level 250 veteran ventures down to White Springs, and oh, lots of them will, you could politely ask him to help you out for five minutes with farming him. 50% chance he'll just walk away and pretend he doesn't hear you. However, I find that because of the reputation of Fallout 76 and maybe not the biggest player base, 76 veterans are normally massively helpful in helping make your playtime more enjoyable and just helping out generally. So now you've hit the big 5-0, chances are you've been able to advance the main quest line right up to before launching a nuke. From here things are slightly easier. You can rotate three locations to effectively farm XP and legendaries. I would still frequent White Springs as you'll be able to hold your own a lot easier and wipe out the ghouls quicker. But now you can start looking at West Tech. West Tech is a building filled to the brims with super mutants. And most of the time when I go it contains at least one legendary. These give great XP and once you get the layout for the building you could probably complete this in under 10 minutes. And of course you can serve a hop to keep clearing it indefinitely. Furthermore if your balls are feeling a bit extra big today, you could adventure down to the burrows under Harper's Ferry. This location wasn't in the base game and was added as a boss dungeon. However, instead of it becoming the challenge Bethesda thought it would, it became every high level player's favourite XP farm. This location is filled to the brim with high level ghouls, most of which are charred so will deal even higher radiation damage than normal. This will not be a walk in the park for level 50s, but by taking it slow and methodical, it serves as a brilliant XP zone, which normally spawns two to three legendary enemies. Events across the map will yield good XP, just make sure to look at the suggested level to make sure you don't get overwhelmed. Of course, if you have just started playing 76 and have some high level friends, get them to take you to end game locations, let you get at least one hit on an enemy, and then they can take them out for you. That way, you're earning the XP level 50 to 60 players should be earning. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you from the bottom of my power armor for taking the time to watch my content. The support and engagement recently has been fantastic and really motivating. This is definitely the most man hours it's taken to create a video for me so far, so a like and sub would be extremely appreciated. 
Thanks again and see you next time.